the pattern for Israel when they came up out of the land of Egypt. Peter, I don't normally call on people in, during services, but what were the children of Israel when they lived in Egypt? Were they free? He's shaking his head, no. They were slaves, right? Right, Vernon? They were slaves. Okay? As slaves, do slaves own anything? Everybody's, no, no. Slaves don't own anything. They don't even own themselves. God wanted his people to have a better life. He brought them out of the land of Egypt because of their, their oppression, their groaning. If we look at Deuteronomy, where Moses gives the children of Israel the law in which they're to live by. In Deuteronomy chapter 28 and in verse 12, we will see what Moses has to say and what God has to say through Moses. I want to actually back up from verse 12. Begin in verse 7. We'll get the entire paragraph this way, but pay close attention to verse 12. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Get the idea that's here. God is acting as protector. All of these things are conditional. All of these promises, if we read the entire chapter, we would find that they are conditional upon their obedience to God. The Lord will command the blessing on your barns and in all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Of course, he's talking about physical blessings. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments. Now there's the condition. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Now, I want to introduce the idea here that he says if you keep his commandments, that's one part. There's a second part. Walk in his ways. Solomon says, can two walk together except they be agreed? When we walk, we can keep God's commandments. You know, oftentimes we think about that. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. Oftentimes, I think Israel fell into the trap of thinking those were the commandments and they were to keep those. Okay, and certainly that, that's right, that's accurate. But then he says, and walk in his ways. There are things in life that may not be sinful, but they may be a really bad idea. And all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity in the fruit of your womb and in the fruit of your livestock. There's that children aspect, the fruit of your womb. You're going to abound in the fruit of your womb. You're going to be a, a plenteous people. They're going to be blessed with children. How many today try to deny God that blessing? And in the fruit of your livestock, in the fruit of your ground, within the land that the Lord swear to give your, to your fathers to give you. Now notice verse 12. The Lord will open to you his good treasury. The heavens to give rain to your land and in its season. And to bless all the works of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations. But here's the principle. But you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. He's going back to Egypt, see. The children of Israel... Shepherds, we learned in our study in Exodus, and even at the end of the book of Genesis, we learned that shepherds were considered an abomination in Egypt. They looked down on them. 
The Hebrew people were considered to be filthy, unclean. The Egyptians looked down upon them. So the Israelites had experienced 400 and some odd years of feeling like they were the tail, the end of the animal. God says, and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall only go up and not down. Again, conditional. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, being careful to do them. And if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I've commanded you today, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods, small g, to serve them. In other words, they were to fall away after idols, something that took the place of God. <coughs> now, under the Old Testament law, which of course we're not, we're under New Testament law, but I believe the principle applies. Under the Old Testament law, believers could not, could loan to those in need. Fellow brothers and sisters, uh, fellow Jewish people, they could loan to those who were desperately in need. But you were not to borrow something from a, a, a Gentile. You could borrow it from a fellow Israelite, but not from a Gentile. Look back at uh, Deuteronomy, back to chapter 23. Uh, Moses had talked about this again in chapter 23 and verse 19. It says, you shall not charge interest on loans to your brother. Interest on money, interest on food, interest on anything that is lent for interest. You may charge a foreigner interest, but you may not charge your brother interest. That the Lord your God may bless you in all that you undertake in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. I can only imagine that, that my bank manager, Pat, would think if he was listening to this lesson. Now, the idea here is that they were not to charge interest to someone who was a member of the Israelite community, who had the need, who fell into the poverty level where they needed a loan, a loan of food, a loan of Money. <clears throat> and so there were restrictions that God placed upon them. No interest was to be charged of their brethren. Brethren were released after seven years. If you had a debt, I wish this existed today. Today, you know, there was a time when you couldn't get any uh, a loan that extended beyond 20 years. Now you can get a 30, 35 year loan. I want you to think about what's happening in our society today. What happens a lot just, just with student loans? What happens with student loans? You get a young person who has absolutely nothing. Zilch. They've just graduated high school. They go, they take out a student loan to get an education. It's all fine and good. Except for what's that do? Student loans never go away. Banks, bankruptcy never eradicates student loans. What we have done is we have taken a generation in America and we have enslaved them in debt. Now again, the person, the student, took out that loan of their own free will. Okay? No one forced them to take out that loan. But if we look at the principle here, Israelites were to forgive or be released from debt after seven years. There is a principle that I wish that we would get through our minds that there is a period of time. After seven years, you were to have that debt paid up. If, if this was the case, my banker would look at me and say, Tom, I'm sorry, I can't loan you anything for more than about six years. Because I want to make absolutely sure that I get my money back, okay? And my contract that I signed, you know, the thing that's about that thick at the bank that nobody ever reads, 
that contract that you signed would state that you would have that paid back within six and a half or six and three quarter years at the most because they would not want to extend that beyond the seven year period. Now let's look at this. Deuteronomy chapter 15, very quickly, back up to this. This was, this was an, to enable the people to begin afresh so that no one would be indebted longer than seven years. It says at the end of the seven years, you shall grant a release. And this is the manner of release. Every creditor shall release what he has lent to his neighbor. He shall not extract it of his neighbor, his brother, because the Lord's release has been proclaimed. In other words, if, if I borrowed Jared's tractor for seven years and refused to return it, under the Mosaic law, Jared would have to release it. Now, what would that make me? I'd be, I'd be pretty low, wouldn't I? That's just, that's just not, that's not a good concept. Again, there's a principle here, and it is to protect those who are unable to pay back the debt that is owed. Now, let's look at something else. Well, I don't have a passage for this one. It really really goes back to Deuteronomy chapter uh, 23 about loaning to non-believers. Non-Jewish non people, they could loan money all day long. If you look historically, the Israelites did that. Historically, the Israelites, as they were blessed, would loan money to other nations and they would become wealthy because of that, because they did charge interest on that. But for their brethren, they weren't allowed to do that. 